January of um, 1964, we went to live in London. And we lived there for two and a half years. We went for 15 months. And we had such a wonderful time. And the office I worked in was, it was a good, it was a good solid job. So and we had a lovely time. Which office was it? And we, I worked for the Owen Luder Partnership in, in London. Um, Owen Luder eventually, later on in his life, long after that, he, he was president of the RIBA for a while. And uh, we did a lot of, um, we were doing a lot of the brutalist stuff in Portsmouth, Catford, um, Sutton, big, big um, concrete brutalist buildings. Residential. Um, sometimes a, a mixed, very often a mixed um, shops, residential, and perhaps mm -hmm. a big car park and that sort of thing, because of the start of big car parks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So broadly, that's that's what the office did. I was involved in a lot of um, um, housing, um, where um, uh, at, at Pinner, which is an outer suburb. Where they had, there were big old houses, probably Victoriana type houses, on big sites, and in that period they'd knock them down and amalgamate some sites, and then you'd build um, all these little terraced houses, um, tiny things, you know, the, go in the front door and there's a loo under the stairs, and upstairs there's a little bathroom and a couple of bedrooms. And, so was this in the days of Parker Morris space standards or um, before that? Don't know. Well, we did public housing that was had to be, you know, there was uh, a minimum size. So everyone designed to the minimum size, which was just... Oh, well, probably it was. I was never aware of that. It was never mentioned that I can remember. Um, and we used to... Um, yeah, uh, and I had to work on those and supervise them and... Thing. There was no design in them, really. They were just drawings, drawings to suit the developer, and you know, that was it. Oh, but it wasn't public housing. So no, it wasn't public oh, housing. Well, no, we, no, we no, no. Oh no, Mr. <coughs> the client used to turn up in his maroon Rolls Royce and have a look at things occasionally. And after working in Australia, it was really quite interesting because I take my little mini van out onto site up at Pinner, which was a fair drive, mm -hmm. and. Um, the first day I got there, I, it was of course every it was mud everywhere, and on a building site in here, it's always dust. It was mud, so the builder said, "Listen, I think you, I'll get you some wellies for your next time." So next time I came, came out with my wellies. He said, "There you go. That's what you need." So they stayed in the back of my van <laughs> for a long while. So. And you stayed there for the whole two and a half years that you were in, in the UK at that office. Yes, mm -hmm. because they were very good to me uh, um, in '64. We'd had planned to take three months off and travel through Europe in a minivan with a two-man tent, and um, which we did. And they said we'd come back mm -hmm. after that. So I came back and just walked straight back into the job. And then after I was there for a while, they put a proposition. Then it came time to sort of think about going home because you had to, you know, the immigration laws and all that sort of thing. We were getting to the end of our stay. And they said, Would, we'd like you to stay with us. So I tossed it up because we really enjoyed London because we were there in the swing in the 60s. Mm. We had a great time. We had good friends. The office was congenial. And I could have perhaps eventually moved to another office. And I thought, what I'd really like would be my own practice. I'd like a house in Hampstead. I want a barn in Suffolk for a weekender, and then I'd like to go to Greece for a couple of weeks in the summer to swim in the sea, and I'd like a Rover 2000 TC car. Right. There was a car in the beginning. And I thought, if I stay here, I'll never achieve that, because I will not get my own practice. I don't have the backing, and I'm not, and I'm not pushy enough to, to do it mm -hmm. out of my environment, so I made a decision to come back to Australia. Oh. And in no time, mm -hmm. I had a house, and a house by the sea, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so on. So, yeah. Worked out. 
it, it was the right it was the right move, I think, um, because we can still go back to London and have a wonderful time and see friends and stuff. So it's all very good.